the amount of guns that are the amount of guns that are here in Arizona, the amount of guns that are here in Arizona are scary to me. I now that there are so many more guns in Arizona than ever before, because after Sandy Hook, the sale of guns went up astronomically. So I want please, to know. Now, now, come on, please. Be I respect. feel like in my own neighborhood, whether I go to the grocery store, whether I'm riding in a car, there could be somebody with a gun in it, and I don't want to live in that kind of culture. So I want to know what can we do okay, in ladies, Arizona to make us feel more safe. And all I can say is, all I can say to you is that our great state of Arizona is full of outdoorsmen and women that love the outdoors, that love to hunt, that to apply for permits to shoot uh, elk or deer or whatever it is, and they and they love. One of the reasons why people come here is because of the great outdoors and the great opportunity we have, and amongst those are hunting and fishing. So all I, can, all I can tell you, I like that. all I can tell, all I can tell you, ma'am, is that is that these you will find people who will have guns, uh, weapons, uh, in their automobiles if they have a license to do so. You will find people who are well within the law to have weapons in this state and in this country. And I hope that we can work to try to prevent. I I, not, I don't know how many times I've had to say this guns falling into the hands of the wrong people. That's what our goal has got to be, and I'm willing to work together with everybody that we can bring into the conversation to make sure it doesn't happen. But I, I, the thing I'm concerned about is, you know, unless we have background checks, unless we, here in Arizona, that's that's where I live. I have an adult, two adult children, three grandchildren, public schools. Yes, ma'am. I'm concerned about have, how I live We do have background state. checks in Arizona. The question is, are those background checks as effective as we want them to be? We, we do don't have background for checks. We don't require private sales and gun, and gun shows, though. We have... All I can say is that everything should be on the table as far as looking at ways to prevent guns from being in the hands of criminals and being in the hands of those who are mentally ill. I hope so, you do, though. Thank you very much. Thank you for your point. Your arm must be getting awful tired. Not really. Thank you, Senator McCain. You don't remember me, but I've been coming to your town hall meetings since you were first elected to Congress in, uh, must have been a I believe it was 82. You must have been a teenager. Uh, no, uh, and I work for Harry Braun. You remember Harry? Yes. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of background so that I can put my question into context. My name is Richard A. Smith. Served in the United States Navy from 1965 to 1969. I was a fire control technician, gunnery third class. Served on a Farragut class, guided missile destroyer. During that time, some of my responsibilities were protecting the ship's complement of nuclear weapons. I also served on an AM Sumner class destroyer, made two several deployments to the, the Sixth Fleet. I had a friend, Robert Douglas, I went to Washington for a Navy ship reunion, and I traced his name. He was a high school friend of mine, killed in action in Anli, Vietnam, November 14, 1967, he was 20 years old. My question for you, Senator McCain, oh, and I'm a retired prosecuting attorney for the National Labor Relations Board here in Phoenix. <clears throat> I'm very proud of it, I might say. I know, we're, all, we're all proud of your service. Sir. Thank you. It is true, Senator, is it not, that despite the overwhelming evidence that the Vietnam War was a mistake and that our war of choice with Iraq was based upon lies and deceit, you supported and continue to support both, and you will continue to advocate for a unilateral attack and war with Iran as zealously as you have advocated on behalf of the Vietnam and Iraq wars. Yes or no? No. Uh, the fact is, sir, as far as Vietnam is concerned, I was a member of the military at that time as well. I didn't have anything to do with that decision except carry out orders, which when the military... So, so, do I believe that, uh, that Vietnam turned out well? Of course not. In case you just missed it, the Vietnamese government just threw a whole bunch more dissidents in prison. After uh, Saigon fell, there were thousands who were murdered and millions who were put, hundreds of thousands who were put into re-education camps. Yes, we have a better relationship now with Vietnam. I supported the normalization 
of, of uh, relations uh, with Vietnam. I still think that we were succeeding in Vietnam when the Congress of the United States cut off all aid to Vietnam and the North Vietnamese had a conventional attack with helicopters and tanks, etc., of, of South Vietnam. But, but how do you, you square that? How do you, that, so how do you square that with the architects of the war, such as Robert McNamara and everyone else that said we made a mistake going into Vietnam? How do you square? And, and I, I squared it a long time ago as a veteran, but how do you as a politician, how do you square the fact that the architects of that war, everyone, John, uh, Robert McNamara said it was a mistake. So how can you say that all those people, the Vietnamese and the Americans, didn't die for a mistake? Because the fact of the matter is, they all died for nothing. I was wondering what your question was. But uh, <laughs> the, the fact is that the Vietnamese lived in enslavement by a communist government as a result of our failure in Vietnam. I believe that Creighton Abrams had the right strategy. I believe that William S. Westmoreland had the wrong strategy. I would be glad to revisit the Vietnam War with you, but the fact is it's over a long time ago. Yeah. And the fact is that in Iraq, we won in Iraq. We won, thanks to David Petraeus and the surge. We won. You don't have to agree with that. You don't have to agree with that. But by not leaving a residual force, now Iraq is unraveling. It is now becoming a center of Al-Qaeda, it is now becoming under the influence of the Iranians, and it is coming apart. And that's the results of our failure to leave a residual force we, in, in Iraq. We caused the chaos of destabilization because we should have not invaded that I country see. because they never did anything to us. There were no weapons of mass destruction, and the powers that be, even Lieutenant General Anthony Zini has already said, and he was a deputy CENTCOM commander in 2000, four-star Marine Corps general said that the Iraq war was, and I quote, a man of lies and deceit, unquote. Thank you. Thank you for that you know, trip down memory lane. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. I'm a U.S. Navy veteran as well from the great state of Arizona. And my question is regarding the larger strategic threat that's out there. We've seen a lot of, uh, of, of aggressive posturing from North Korea. A little closer. Uh, a lot of uh, aggressive posturing from North Korea. And we're seeing the greater China threat occurring right now. We're seeing non China using non-state <coughs> actors and other types of, uh, of vehicles, whether it's a cyber attack or whether it's an economic attack, um, so on and so forth. And now that China's become the world's largest trader as of 2012, with us being the largest net exporter or uh, importer, but then being the largest net exporter. They're now the number one trading uh, uh, entity in the world. And 